Um, now, having swum along the English Channel rather than across it, Lewis Pugh is now taking on an even tougher and chillier challenge. What is it? He's joining us now from Hella in Iceland. Hello to you. Good morning, Kay. How are you? I am great. Tell me what the plan is. So the plan is another 10 days of cold water acclimatisation here in Iceland, slowly swimming in colder and colder and colder water, and then off to Greenland to uh, what I describe as the, the epicentre of the climate crisis. And there I'll be doing a swim across the face of the Alulasat ice uh, fjord. Uh, it's the fastest moving glacier in the world now. Is this your biggest challenge yet? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, so when, for example, when I swam across the North Pole in 2007 or on Mount Everest in 2010, I was swimming a kilometre. This swim, as a crow flies, is 10 kilometres. And so each day I'm going to do a kilometre, get out, rewarm, reheat, and then get it back in the next day. Um, the thing about cold water swimming is with most sports, the more experience you have, the better you're able to do a sport. But with cold water swimming, it's a complete opposite. And that is because when you have been really, really, really cold, uh, you never forget it. And so the next time you get in the water, you've got to get rid of all those memories of the absolute freezing cold, which I still have in my bones. Is it dangerous? Yes, without a shadow of a doubt, it's dangerous. And the reason why I'm doing this is to highlight the, the real speed of the climate crisis. I speak to political and business leaders all over the world. I don't think that they are on top of the, the, the speed of this, of, of the, of this crisis. Uh, I'm asking leaders now to really join the dots. I'm going to this place where very few people go to shine a light on what's happening there. I mean, we have over 650 MPs in the United Kingdom, hundreds of peers, I think about 20 members of cabinet, you ask how many of them have been to Ilulisat, have been to Greenland, have been to the polar regions, which you know, is the epicenter of the climate crisis. How many of them have been there and seen what's happening and understand the impact that it's gonna have on all of us? It's literally a handful. And so by going there, doing the swim, going there with Sky News and showing what's happening there, we hope that the leaders, when they go to the COP negotiations, which is in, just 82 days time, they'll all be meeting in Glasgow to collectively decide our future and, and they need to be informed, they need to be environmentally uh, illiterate. Why this particular ice field uh, though, Lewis? Why have you chosen this spot? It's just because it's the fastest moving. It's moving at a, at a speed of 30 metres a day. I mean, it's an astonishing place. The icebergs which are carving off the Alulasat uh, uh, glacier they're over a kilometre tall. I mean, it's astonishing. Imagine an iceberg coming off there, which is a kilometre tall. Legend has it, actually, that the iceberg which sank the Titanic came off this glacier just over 100 years ago. And as we all know, everybody said that the Titanic was unsinkable. The passengers were on board there. They were asleep when that ship hit the Titanic. And it's, it, I think it's a good analogy because uh, I fear that many of our leaders at the moment are asleep at the wheel. This is the defining issue of our generation. It's the most serious thing. What happens now over the next 82 days will define our future. We have to get serious about this crisis.